Well, good morning, my brothers and sisters. We are excited today because God has a word for you and for me on this blessed Lord's Day. We're going to invite you to look with us to the Old Testament reading, a very familiar passage, and that's the 23rd division of Psalm. Yes, the 23rd division of Psalm, it shall be the basis of our sharing with you today. And while you're turning and while you're preparing for the word of God, would you go with me in prayer as we speak to God concerning those things that trouble us? God, we want to give you praise and we want to say thank you for just being God and God alone. God, we say thank you for allowing us to be safe all night long. You watched over us. And then early this morning, you allowed us to see a brand new day. And not only that, God, we're grateful because many of us still woke up this morning close in our right mind. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for things being as well as they are. Understanding, God, it could have been worse. But your grace and your mercy kept troubles away from us. And God, as we bow in humble submission, again, we pray for families across this nation. We pray for those who are struggling financially, God. We're praying for those who lost their loved ones and they're still grieving. Let them know through the urging of your spirit that earth has no sorrows, that heaven cannot heal. And God, we cannot forget our country. We cannot forget our world. Cannot forget our community, our society. Lord, we pray for the people right now in Jesus' name, that don't know you and the pardon of their sins. God, we're praying for leaders all across this nation. Lead them and guide them in a way that will be pleasing in your sight. From the president all the way down, God, we ask that you intervene and let your loving arm of protection lead us in a way that you will have us to go. And God, we'll be ever careful to give you the praise and the glory goes to you. Now let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart. Be accepted in thy sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name I'm praying. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, we are excited because God's word makes us excited. And we want to invite you to look with us today, uh, the 23rd division of Psalm, Psalm 23. And I shall be reading from what we call the New International Version. It may read a little different from perhaps your King James rendering, but we're reading from the New International Version, the 23rd Division of Psalm, Psalm of David. And God invites us to hear his word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. And as we engage this passage, I'm reminded of a conversation that was held just this week, this past week, too. matter of fact. A couple of gentlemen and I were talking. We were having what we call a roundtable discussion and the topic came up, how to stay focused or how to stay positive in a negative world. And matter of fact, that's what I want to talk about today. If we were tag this particular text, I want to talk about how do you stay positive in a negative world? When you look around us, there are a whole lot of negative things going on. Negativity is everywhere. We're battling with what we call race wars, and out of the race wars, we have negative vibes, negative spirits, negative comments. Around us is negative. COVID-19, the death toll is at an all-time high. 
And to me, that's a negative. Political wars where leaders are divided about what to do. Leaders say they're in leadership and power to leave this country in a place of safety, and they are divided. That brings a negative atmosphere. But how do you stay positive in a negative world? Uncertainties, unrest across this vast country, this land of ours, the Christian movement unable to do what it needs to do, and we are under a spiritual attack, not only by the enemy, but the foes as well. Christian movement has its own challenges within itself. It brings on a negative vibe. We're all in this thing together. Once someone has said, we are in it together. But when you look around now, gradually, it looks like we're moving toward every man for himself. Social gathering has become a thing of the past that makes it a negative environment. Unemployment have reached a record high. Families really don't know which way to turn, what the next day will bring, how will we supply for our families. It brings a negative vibe to the movement. But how do you stay positive in a negative world? I'm excited because the Word of God tells us in the 23rd Psalm that the Lord is my shepherd. And the reason it excites me is David, the writer of this particular division of Psalm, here he uses the 23rd Psalm, and it is what we call a very personal Psalm. If you look at it in its entirety, there's no reference to we, there's no reference to us or they, for the writers here speaks of only me, my, and I. In other words, He's claiming God as his personal savior. David here gives his testimony as a personal experience with God. Here David writes in the midst of a crisis. He was dealing with what we call a personal crisis. Matter of fact, we could tag it and say he had his own personal pandemic. But even though it was negative all around him, David tells us in these few verses, all six verses, how to be positive in a negative world. David refers to God as the third person. Then the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me to lie down. He leads me. He restores my soul. And then when you look at the fourth and fifth verse, David shifts referring to him in the second person. He says, I, refer no e I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David is letting us know that in the midst of uncertainties, in the midst of trials, chaos, he says when it's negative, you can still maintain a positive attitude and have a positive spirit. Why? Because... The Lord is your shepherd. And I want to suggest to you today that God sometimes allows all of us to experience what I call a time in the valley. Yes, God will lead us and God will guide us into a valley experience. And God says, I'm with you even in your valley. And when your valley is dark and you experience the shadows of death. God says, I'm with you. That lets me know that I can still maintain a very positive attitude in a negative world. I'm excited because what God takes you through, he will not only take you through, but he will see you through. God is with us in the sunshine, and God is with us in the rain. God is telling us today in this 23rd Psalm that I will be with you even when it seems dark. We, my brothers and sisters, 
are dealing with some negative vibes. Negative can be good as long as God is with you. Now, when we look at this 23rd Psalm, what makes it exciting and what gives me a blessed hope is I want to pause for a minute and look at this 23rd division of Psalm and look at it from a different perspective. I want to look at it through the eyes or the lens of the sheep. When we look at this passage, if the sheep was talking today, I can literally hear the sheep says, I don't want another shepherd. And there's a reason that the sheep tells us he don't want another shepherd. Even the sheep says, in the midst of crisis, I still have a positive outlook. I still have a positive attitude. And because the shepherd is with me, I don't want another shepherd. Matter of fact, if you're near someone, just look at them and say, neighbor, I don't want another shepherd. When we look at and examine this passage, the 23rd Psalm, these six verses are power packed to let us know that if you have God as your chief shepherd, if you have God as your great shepherd, then you can join in with the sheep and declare to all of the world, I don't want another shepherd. When I look at verse 5, if you will, and we embrace the ideology of the sheep, when we look through this verse through the eyes of the sheep, let's look what the sheep says to us. In verse 5 he says, he prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. He anointed my head with all. This speaks of his performance. Why is it that I don't want another shepherd? Because the shepherd that I worship, the, ser the shepherd that I serve, his performance is everlasting. And he's performing just for me. Watch this. David keeps this on a personal level. And I don't want another shepherd based on his performance for me. He prepares the table in the presence of my enemies. He anointed my head with oil. Look how God will perform for you in the presence of those who don't even care for you. You see, when God elevates you, when God promotes you, when God places you where he wants you to be, and he'll do it, in the presence of your enemy. And not only he prepares a table for you, that's letting us know that God will bless you in front of people who wish for your demise. And that lets me know I can join in with the sheep and say, you know what? Based on God's performance and based on the shepherd's performance for me, I don't want another shepherd. And I can maintain a positive attitude even in a negative world. And then here, when we look at verse 4, it, it breaks it down for us. He says, And although I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. This speaks of his protection for me. First of all, we saw his performance for me, but now we see his protection for me. Here it is in verse 4. He says, Although I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. God is ever protecting his sheep. Now, I will say this. When you're wrong, God will make it right. God will do the chastising. God will bring the correction. But one thing I've learned about God, if you're a child of God, he will not allow people to put their hands on you. God is my protection. God is your protection. And he says, even when you're just walking in the shadows of death, when you're walking in places in your life that seems gloomy, when you're walking in places in your life that seems like it's all hope is gone, he says, I will protect you. And if God will protect me, not only prepare a table before me to press on my enemy, not only protect me when I'm walking through the valleys and the shadows of death around my enemies, and he gives me protection, that lets me say like the sheep, I don't want another shepherd. Matter of fact, I can stay positive now, even in a negative world. And then when we look at verses 2 and 3, it brings it home for us. It says, and he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness. Watch this. For his name's sake. Where he leads me, he speaks of my of his purpose for me. He, he, he shared already his performance. He talked about already his protection, but now his, his purpose for me is that he gets the glory for his righteousness sake. The purpose that God has for you is so that you can tell others, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The purpose that you go through some things in life, you experience some things, you've had some valley low experiences, and God says, I take you through the valley, but I stay with you in the valley. And while you're in this valley, he says, the purpose is to bring you out. And when God brings you out, that, that altar, let others know. Because he brought me through this, he brought me through that, I don't want another shepherd. And I can say positive, even in a negative word. And here it is in verse 1. Who is he? He speaks of, this, the, of his power and of the person. The Lord is my shepherd. Verse 1 talks about the person. Talks about power. I shall not want. Two things here. Two schools of thought. The Lord is my shepherd. And because he is my shepherd, I want for nothing. And because he is my shepherd, I don't want another shepherd. Because his power have proven to me over and over and over again. If God is your shepherd, my brothers and my sisters, you can maintain a very positive attitude in a negative world. And so when I walk through the streets of Augusta, when I ride through the streets of Augusta, when I look at all of the tragedy that's going on, and when I watch the news, and, and every time you turn on the television, it's bad news after bad news after bad news. But when I see these things that are happening all around me, I can let the world know I don't want another shepherd because I maintain a positive attitude in the midst of a negative world. And God is saying to you today, he's saying to me today, if you maintain the relationship with your shepherd, when it's negative in your life, when it's dark in your life, when you have valley low experiences, God says, I will allow you to have a positive attitude in a negative world. Now, I may not be talking about maybe the world as you know it, maybe your, perhaps your own personal world. Many of you are struggling in your personal world. A lot of things that you're dealing with in your personal world that you don't want other people to know. You don't want other men or other women to know. Matter of fact, you don't even want the church to know. You're just, you're just battling some things. I'm talking to somebody who's battling with some personal issues that, that have you restless at night, some personal issues that won't allow you to sleep, some personal issues that brings worry and strife into your life. God says, he says, if you maintain and keep a relationship with the shepherd, I will provide a positive outcome in a negative world. And then, my brothers and sisters, you'll be able to stand on the shoulders of God and say once again, look what the Lord has done. And you'll be able to join hands with David, and you'll write these words on the altar of your heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then you can embrace the sheep and tell the whole world, guess what? Based on what the Lord has already done for me, I don't want another shepherd. Because the shepherd that I have, He's allowed me to maintain a positive attitude in a negative world. And when you decide to go and be a part of society, you go perhaps on your job, perhaps just hanging out with friends, and when you spot a negative vibe, when you be a part of something that's negative, sometimes you can be around people that's all they talk about is negative. I, I've, I've been around people that, that celebrate another man's demise. They love to bask in negative. But when you're around that, and you know that the Lord is your shepherd, you can join in with David, the writer, and says, I can stay positive, even in a negative world. And David said, I've had some negative experiences. Some I brought on myself. Some were brought on by the enemy. 
but because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David says, I am in want for nothing. And because I'm in want for nothing, I don't want another shepherd. May God bless you. May God keep you and celebrate God today as you walk away today and understand if God is my shepherd, I don't want another shepherd. And as a result, I can then maintain a positive spirit, a positive attitude, even when my personal world is negative, the Lord is my shepherd. May God richly bless you is my prayer. May God keep you. May God keep you from all harm, hurt, and danger. My brothers and sisters, after this word has gone forth, perhaps there's someone who's listening, say, Preacher, I don't know this Jesus that you're talking about. I don't know this God that you're talking about. Well, we want to get you to know him. We want to invite you to get to know the Lord as your personal Savior. And all you got to do is simply pray, bow your head, and say, Lord, I am a sinner. Just confess, Lord, I am a sinner. But I believe in my heart that Jesus died for the remission of all sins. And God, I believe in my heart that you yourself raised your son from the grave. And God, come into my life and lead me so that I can join the Christian movement and let the world know that I don't want another shepherd. May God richly bless you and keep you as our prayer. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for reminding us through your word, reminding us through the text, that when it's all said and done, the Lord is my shepherd. And because the Lord is my shepherd, I don't want another shepherd. God, thank you for the ability. Thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge to know that if you do it, it's done. And God, we give you the praise for just doing what you do. And we thank you for imparting in us the spirit of a positive movement that even when it's negative, we can still maintain a positive spirit. And with that, we say, we don't want another shepherd. Amen, amen, and amen. God richly bless you is my prayer.